Okay. I'd like to call um, the meeting to order, select board meeting to order for Tuesday, January 16th, 2024. Just want to say uh, Judy is not present in the room tonight. She is on Zoom. She's not feeling well. And Laura is also not going to be present in the room uh, because of the roads and the conditions outside. But she is present on Zoom. She is also present on Zoom. Thank you. Yeah. Agenda changes or additions. We are going to delete number seven, town, town plan revision. And we are going to add under uh, Roman numeral eight, uh, just an announcement about the uh, presentation regarding crime on January 22nd, but I'll talk more about that when we get there. Approve the minutes. We have minutes from January 2nd. I would move to approve the minutes of January 2nd, 2024. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard to approve the minutes from January 2nd. Laura, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, great. Judy, can you hear us? There's some noise in the background. But, uh, are there any, uh, any, is there any discussion regarding the minutes from January 2nd? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Judy, why don't you send me a text message with a thumbs up because your your um, microphone is not working. So I'm gonna mute you. Uh, but Judy, why don't you just send me a thumbs up on the motions, please? So I have them. Okay, uh, that would be unanimous then. I didn't hear from Judy. That would be. A She's gonna be texting me. Okay, so that's four zero. Uh, approve the minutes of the community meeting from June sixth, uh, two thousand twenty-four. I would move the minutes to the community meeting day, January sixth, twenty twenty-four. I'll second. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard, and it is January, not June. I'm sorry. Do we have any discussion regarding the minutes? Hearing none. All those in favor of approving the minutes from January sixth. Aye. 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 And that would be an aye from me as well. That would be unanimous, Judy. Approve the minutes of the Select Board Budget Review from January 8th, 2024. Remove the minutes of January 8th, 2024. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Any comments regarding the minutes of January 8th? Okay, if not, all those in favor of say aye. 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 That would be four zero again. Five, I'm getting Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to new business. Uh, agency of Transportation Mileage Certificate. Uh, the Agency of Transportation requests that the town certify their mileage annually, and we do have a certificate in front of us. All the select board members have received this certificate. And Kevin, who is not present in the room, has confirmed that there are no new public roads that were accepted in 2023. So I think that's worthy of being noted. Yeah, and, and the reason that we do this annually is to, uh, it's the state aid to highways or municipalities. Okay, thank you. So I am looking for a motion to approve the AOT mileage certificate as presented. I'll move the certificate of highway mileage year ending February 10th, 2024. I'll so I have a second. Okay, I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Are there any comments or discussion regarding the AOT certificate? Please don't forget, I think you all have to sign it as well. We do. Okay. And we do have that. We do have it. Right yeah. So I do have a folder here with it. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That would be an aye from the chair as well. Okay, thank you. Town manager search update. Chris, I believe you have a um, an update on that, you being the only select board member on the yep, committee. I do. Um, it's pretty brief. Uh, we've been meeting on a monthly basis. 
Um, we are um, this week. We are finalizing the um, brochure, which is looks like this. Um, there was a few tweaks and uh, some picture changes and such, but we're pretty much there. It has um, an overview of town of Morristown and expectations, as well as a job description. Um, this will once it's ready for publication, which hopefully will be this week. Um, will be on the town website. Will be available for everybody to see. And then um, Dominic will send it out to uh, the um, choices of advertising agencies, um, and it will also be in the ICMA, which means it will go nationally as well. Um, we set a schedule, um, tentative schedule, to try to abide by, uh, depending on the applications. But um, the um, brochure will be finalized, ads placed this week, um, the resume packet. Reviewed and assembled by February 12th, which will be the applicants that will be coming to us, hopefully. Um, selection um, meeting will be around uh, February 15th. Uh, that's a tentative date. Um, candidates will be uh, invited around February 16th. Our first round of interviews will be hopefully February 21st to the 22nd. Um, and then the short list would be forwarded to select board hopefully the week of the 26th. Okay. February. So, um, did you want to add anything, Sarah? So, thank you. So, so February twelfth is when applications are that's tentatively tentative. due, or is that that's, that's the tentative date? Okay, great. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll have okay. a lot to choose from. Okay, thank you very much for that. We uh, we don't need any motions. We don't need any action to take place no, tonight. It's just, it's just a matter of updating us. Well, All thank right. you. Okay, I will move on to number three, communications with the press policy. Uh, I know Carrie did draft a policy for um, communications between us and the press, and she has given us a copy of that to review. I know I've reviewed it. I, I assume all the select board members have reviewed it. Again, there's no action to be taken on this tonight either. She's just throwing a draft out there and wants to get some feedback. So at this point, I will just say, Carrie, I did read it, and uh, I do not have any uh, any feedback for you. I just want to reiterate for the audience and for anybody else listening that this is for, the, for uh, communications with the press only. This is not communication through other platforms, just, through, just with the press directly. So, any comments from the yeah, select board? I don't have any questions. I, I think it's fine. Richard? I can care. Yeah, it's fine. Laura? Well, um, I mean, I'll talk to Carrie about this. It's a, um, you know, we oftentimes get calls for personal comments, but, um, you know, where we're not asked to speak for the select board, but we're asked about our personal opinions. So, uh, I'm a little curious. Carrie, the way I read it is that we're, it kind of reads as though we're not allowed to talk to the press at all. But could you elaborate, please? I can. Um, I mean, generally, when a, a select board elects a, a spokesperson, it's usually the chair, because as a board, as a group, you've elected a chair and it, and it does, it does imply and in practice, it seems to work, although I know it might have written kind of seem restrictive but we I've done it in St. Albans and it worked yes I know that the press reaches out but in an effort to keep one continuum um, agreed upon message the board agrees usually to have one or two spokespeople and it's usually the town manager and the and the select board chair or if say the select board chair was out of the country for two weeks they could designate the vice chair assistant you know that kind of thing but it's best practice, but that's kind of what, so that is what I'm suggesting actually, Laura. And I also did it to, over two meetings just so that it could let it marinate and um, we could have some discussion about it. Thank you, Carrie. I know my, my margin notes to myself were kind of along the lines of what, what you're referring to is that it's a good way to avoid any mixed message getting out there. That we do have that 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 one messenger, which could be the town manager. It doesn't need to be a member of the select board either. The town manager herself could could take care of that. So, any right. other? 
usually they ask us to comment on something that that we you've done as a board and that's where Robert rules is it kind of important you as a board decide what you do going forward and I'm just explaining the decision I'm certainly not certainly not setting any policy um, all by myself so. great Judy Bickford just texted. She's fine with it. <clears throat> okay, great. Thank you, Judy Bickford. Any Hi. other com any other comments regarding the uh, the press policy? Okay, you all set, Laura? Yeah, uh, we'll talk about it more next week. Okay. Or the next meeting. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you for your comment. Okay, so uh, again, sure, sure. Okay. again, I'm going to move on. Unless Sarah, yeah, come on up. Is this policy? Can you for identify yourself, uh, Sarah Haskins, Town Clerk and Treasurer? Is the policy <laughs> for select board staff, everyone? Um, just trying to make sure that I would understand the protocol. I got the press ninety nine percent of the time. If they reach out to me, it's about elections questions. So I'm just wondering if if this were to be approved, is if if Tommy calls me and wants to know about town meeting. Am I then referring him to Carrie? And then Carrie will decide if she's going to answer, if I'm going to answer. Is that how it would work? That's um, a good question, Carrie. Is it is this directed to the employees as well? And um, it is directed to the employees, but there's always exceptions to the rule. And that would be that Sarah is the elected um, election officials. So I would expect that they would reach out to Sarah on those items. Okay on those issues. Okay. Sarah's nodding in the affirmative. Okay. Okay, thank you. So I am going to, unless there's further discussion, I'm going to move on to number four. And number four is a quick claim deed of easement for the McKinley property. The McKinley property is um, on Bridge Street, uh, it's the corner of North River Street and Bridge Street. So it's going down towards the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Wastewater treatment plant would be on the other side of the road. And as I understand it, the existing building encroaches on the town's right of way. And this easement that should we decide to do this, would uh, would uh, would grant an easement to that property owner for that structure? Does that seem yeah. fair, Carrie? Would you like to elaborate? Uh, no, you you summed it up actually very well. Um, and at this point, it is holding up a closing, so it's one of the reasons we put it on here as quickly as we could. I think Todd and Judy had sent a map, to, uh, copied a map for you, so you could have a visual, but. I don't have that right yeah now. yeah i have the map in front of me and it's the if anybody in the audience would like to see the map i'd be happy to share it with you it is the northeast corner i can't tell exactly what the distance would be but it is the northeast corner of their building so that encroaches into the right of way I will add while well, people are looking at that, that we did obviously work with our town attorney on this issue and it, um, he, he was fine with uh, you agreeing to sign it. If you're um, considering making a motion, I'd ask that you have the town manager, authorize the town manager to sign that um, easement so that we can expedite this for them. Okay, thank you. Um, would anybody like to present a motion? I'll make a motion um, to approve the quick claim deed of easement um, for the uh, June McKinley trustee of the JB and June McKinley Family Trust, um, and that uh, we authorize the town manager to sign on behalf of the town. Great. Thank you, Chris. I have a motion. Do I'll I have second. a second? I'll second that. I have a second from Richard. <clears throat> Discussion. Laura? Nope, I'm good. Thank you, Judy. Anything from Judy? Bickford? Okay. 
Any discussion? No. I'm fine with this as well. So I am going to ask the board, uh, all those in favor of the motion as stated, say aye. 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 And Judy, okay, so that's a unanimous across the board. Okay, next on our business, the town warning review. So we were given a, um, I think it's, it's basically a draft of what the articles will be at town meeting. And what we're doing tonight is we've been presented with this draft. Uh, we're not going to officially vote on this until January 29th, which is the planned warning, but it does give the board and the public um, an opportunity to uh, see what the articles are that are being considered at this point for the March 5th town meeting. So I guess I would open it up to the board to uh, provide some feedback. We don't need any motions. We don't need any actions on this tonight. We just need to uh, get some feedback um, to those that would put the final warning together for March 5th. I, do, I will say, you know, the, the second paragraph, this is just, it's not so much a typo, but just a reminder that um, in the second paragraph, it does say articles one through blank that will need to be filled in at some point. So if anybody else notices that. It's just because we don't know what the total number of articles are at this point. Okay. Laura, would you like to comment? Oh, I, I just have a question. Um, I don't have it in front of me. My um, Adobe isn't working today. Um, the article for the EMS, uh, I believe it's um, 1% to create a special fund. Um, I'm curious where that came from. Was that submitted by EMS via petition or just curious about it? Anybody? That's a good question. Uh, I do remember this being spoken about in the past, but I'm not sure where it came from, whether it came directly from EMS or whether it came from administration. Carrie, do you, do you have any feedback? I don't actually right now, but I will look into it. I don't know if Judy does, Judy Albury. Um, I know that what, what we asked them to do is just look at last year's warning and um, start use that as a starting point. So I'm not, I'm not there. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for it too, Laura. Oh. What number is it? I, I'm sorry, I don't have it. Uh, again, I can't get into the... Um, Okay. I don't have any. Let me I'll look for it. I have it up, but um, um, there's one for the fire department. I don't see one for you. I was reading it really quick. I'll I'll, um, I'll bring it up. Laura, yeah. Laura, if you get on to the MorristownVT.gov website and go to the agenda minutes, you can pull up the packet and see the warning. That's um, it's it's not in the warning that's being presented. Oh, okay. Um, that would explain it. The uh and. It, I can't look at it. My Adobe crashed, so it won't open the PDF, but thank you, Judy. Okay. Any other comments regarding the articles as proposed? So I do. I have a question. I'm glad Ron's here um, because this is a conversation that you and I had um, several times. It's the um, it's the half cent um, that's uh, proposed to um, be dedicated to the Morristown Conservation Commission. Um, my question really was um, the um, what the $55,000 would be dedicated to this coming fiscal year if we were to raise that much money, um, knowing that I think there's approximately thirty-seven dollars or $38,000 still available to the Conservation Commission. Um, so if you want to speak to that one, that'd be great. I oh, guess I'm going to pull this down. Thank you. Uh, I Could you identify yourself, please? I don't know if I... Uh... Identify yourself? Oh, sorry. Ron Stankoff, Conservation Commission Chair. 
I brought down a uh, visual aid. I don't know if that's acceptable at this time, but if you would accept it and pass it on, I'll explain it. <clears throat> on the uh, front page, which is number one, is a site of the current Morristown Forest. Now, MCC has been involved quite heavily with this particular subject. What is unknown to you, Bard, is that we accomplished the surveying of this particular property. It's, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, but as yet, not recorded. Uh, I have instructed my surveyor that we worked with to do this, that uh, now it's time to have it recorded. Anyway, if you look at the big white spot with the X on it. Is it this one right here? Yes. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> that was the former Sullivan property. Uh, the current bo the board a couple years ago suggested that we should be looking at maybe acquiring that to do so. But when I did inquire of the owner, he had already uh, had a contract to sell it. So this was one instance where the board, which has a primary interest in conserving lands that would like to be conserved, uh, missed the opportunity. Now, if you flip over the page, you'll see a different uh, property. If you recognize it, it is the current Duhamel gravel pit. <clears throat> and if you look at the... Uh, <laughs> If you look at the green X that's listed that's on there, that's the other property that the uh, Morristown owns. But there's an error on our tax map. So I have pointed this out to the tax people. If you look at the X, red X, this is a 50-acre property that I have sent a letter out to a property owner in the last week or so of the possibility of maybe acquiring that to add on to the uh, Duhamel gravel pit land. I look at the gravel Duhamel pit as that it's long, in long term is a Morristown asset, another forest for recreational use. The, uh, <clears throat> the X parcel is a 50 acre parcel. It's currently listed for 254000 That's about 5000 an acre. That's uh, not a bad deal since some are being advertised for 10000 an acre in this town. So I'm trying to point out the fact that a lot of this money that we held, hold in escrow is not spent in this particular fiscal year, probably. We're trying to amass enough that we can do something. And... And that's what other conservation people do. The other way, the other thing we can do to assist ourselves is we do have enough money to get uh, established. We can conduct a fundraiser. So anyway, I'm trying to explain why we need to have an annual budget item. And I want to point out the fact that, and I don't know what year this happened, that the select board uh, agreed with the state of Vermont that they would like to have a conservation commission. We are not the only commission in the state of Vermont. You, I believe Carrie commented about one that was up in Georgia. So uh, she probably has a wealth of information on what, what goes on there. I understand that uh, the people who are looking at how they spend their money. Uh, I would hope that they would look at this as an investment for them. <coughs> okay, thank you. <coughs> I have other people here. You want to comment on anything, Brett? So Ron, before you sit down, I just want to be clear. So I, I understand the, the second page here. So we're looking at 
you're, you're, you were presenting information on that 50 acre parcel, which is adjacent to the Duhamel pit that the town already owns. The I'm other... waiting for a return letter from the popular. See if he's interested in doing anything. So the parcel... And then part of this thing is we have to go to the select board to say, is this something that we can proceed with? So, so my question is about yeah. the other side. On oh, page that's one, error? that's the old Sullivan property. Is that what you're oh, saying? Oh, yes. Well, okay. The one up in the forest. And how big is that parcel? About 55 acres. And yeah. so is the Conservation Commission uh, considering purchasing that property as well in the future? Right now, it's being logged. <laughs> right. I'm aware of that. <laughs> uh, you know, I looked at it. As I could not understand how anyone would want to pay the amount of money that they paid for that particular property. And I think that's what held us up in even trying to proceed with acquisition. Considering the road to get to it, and if you recall at the January 6th meeting, I uh, <clears throat> highlighted the fact that Morristown invested in buying all three properties up there because they were spending too much money for maintaining the roads. So the tax dollar savings when we acquired all the land that we did up in the Morristown forest. And they moved the farmer out, uh, out on Terrell, I can't remember the street name, but anyway, uh, I think we all recognize that we have a valuable asset. No, more forest, the better. That's how humanity lived a thousand years ago was primarily burning wood. So. <laughs> Any you. more questions? Thank you, Ron. I think my only comment would be, and, and I've had this conversation with Ron, is, is that um, I understand the motivation of the Conservation Commission in terms of wanting to have a fund, a slush fund to have available, but ultimately it comes back to the select board to authorize those kinds of expenditures. And when we're talking about a quarter of a million dollars to buy a piece of property uh, to conserve, I think um, that, that the stewardship piece of that is very commendable, but we've approached this budget from basically throughout all of our departments as a need base and it's you know essentially um, you know covering the actual operating expenses of this municipality at the best affordable price that we can and i'm just not sure that um, continuing to place money aside for a possibility or, or essentially it's a possibility of some future uh, purchase for this year um, doesn't make a lot of fiduciary sense to me. And that may be short-sighted. I'm not saying that I think that the article should come off in the warning. I think that ultimately it's up to the taxpayers on whether they want to, to, to fund it. Um, I'm just saying that as a board member, and because I'm not going to be here January uh, 29th to vote on the uh, warning because I'm going to be out of town, just wanted to be known that I don't think that this year is the appropriate year to continue to put money aside for a possibility or what if. Um, I think that it's an austere budget, and um, that's how we've approached it. That's how I've approached it. Um, I thank the Conservation Commission for all the hard work that they do, um, but I, I don't support that article. No. I, I didn't happen to add in the fact that you know, the current Duhamel pit is I don't believe there has been an investment in having that property surveyed. So I don't know if I would, I would encourage my group to be involved in the possibility of that particular type of a thing. So you can plan on how the land is used as it lays. And uh, thank you for your time. I mean, the other thing too, Ron, is, is that these properties that you might be interested in, if you approach the landowner and ask them for a first right of refusal, 
uh, pending um, town authorization, that might be another way to approach it. That's all I got. Any other comments? Richard? I have nothing further. Laura? <clears throat> uh, I have a question, uh, possibly for Carrie. Uh, isn't there a number of times that uh, an article can appear on uh, the town? I th I thought it was like three times, and then you... Then you can't ask it again, is that what you're saying? Right. That I... There was a limit to how many times you could... I'm not sure there's a limit. I keep thinking this isn't baseball, but I don't... I will check with VLCT. I don't know if there's a limit. I I, I kind of think in the effort of being transparent and really open that you you can in fact every ask every year, but that's a good question. So and maybe I'll... maybe it's for Sarah. Maybe I'm thinking in terms of appropriations, um, mm -hmm. that you could only put in three times. But um, okay, thank you. Sarah's yeah. giving me a look of uncertainty. Yeah. Hold on, one second, Tom, Ron. I want to say something. Yeah, do we, would you like to respond to that? So I don't believe so because this I think- Sarah any, Haskins. Uh, sorry. Anybody can petition to have an article and you have to put it on regardless if you want to or not, if it's petition. Okay. Um, you might be confused with if something, like if an article fails, maybe that's where the confusion is. Um, like the budget, but like the town budget you have, to, oh, know what it is? The school, I don't know. I think the school budget has to, like if it fails, you have to, um, you have to have one by July 1st or it reverts to the old budget. I wonder if that's what the confusion is. Well, but there, like, was, there was some discussion where if an article failed um, that, um, that um, there was a, a need to repetition to, to get back on it. Yeah, that was part of our, our social services yeah. appropriation right. policy where we did we did very specifically say that if an article does fail for one of them that they needed to repetition right. to get the, on it. The difference with uh, <clears throat> the Conservation Commission is, is, is a, a, a board um, appointed by the town to function on the town's behalf yep. under the supervision of the select board, whereas the social service articles are outside entities asking for town appropriations. So I think that we have discretion to allow an article that's municipal based to, to proceed on a, on a warning. I guess I, I would just like to say, I mean, I understand what you're saying, Chris, and I understand what Ron's saying. I, I am certainly leaning towards letting the voters decide on this. And I don't disagree. With I that. don't know how many you know, I, I'm sitting here, I'm really uncertain how many people in town would um, would support this. I'm certain there's at least one, and I'm certain there's at least one that wouldn't. But uh, obviously, we're going to have many more than two people, or we hope so, voting. And um, I, I guess that's my only thought. Yeah. And I, I do know the Conservation Commission, I believe, did not, their article did not pass last year. Do I remember that correctly? Yes. So... Given that, you know, it's an opportunity to go back to the uh, to the public and give them um, well, give them a chance to let the yeah. This is yeah. Let me finish. It, it, let me, it, let me finish. It, it, let, it, let me I'm let sorry. me finish. Oh, and well, give them a chance to uh, decide whether or not this is a reasonable expenditure of money for the temp for the town. I, if this goes on to be bounded by the public. My group will probably beat the bushes and try to persuade the, in the town to look at this as an investment in the future of conservation of lands within the town for the benefit of the whole town public. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Okay, I think we've, uh, I think the board's had a chance to express their opinions. Yeah. And uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to move forward.
mailing of school ballots. So, Sarah, would you do you have any reason to present this? I can. Do you want to? What were you going to speak to, Tom? I was going to speak about the uh, about the warning here, if I could. I didn't know you wanted to speak. I thought I was done with that. Go ahead. I just want to throw some figures out to, uh, for you to consider. If you don't, I'm still working on the library. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, these figures I would just have you consider before you finalize on the warning for the library. Uh, fiscal year 21, uh, 21 and 22 and 22, 23 were level funded for 186,000. Uh, dollars uh, plus 19 and 23 24 it jumped up to 20 uh, to 200 not 100 261 thousand and 369 dollars this year they're asking for 286 thousand and 448 dollars that's a hundred thousand dollars increase in their appropriations and since 2022, 2023. This year, they uh, are asking for a $25,000 increase from last year. They happen to have, they happen to not take, they did not take out $20,000 from their endowment this year. In other words, they're asking us to pay the $25,000 rather than them taking the $20,000 out of their million dollar endowment. That's yeah. something to think about. And you are talking about the taxpayers paying money. Uh, this seems like it's uh, an overload. So I'm gonna move on to number six, mailing of annual school ballots. And it's my understanding that the school board did vote on this concept last week. So Sarah, if you could just let us know what this is in regards to. Yeah, Sarah Haskins, town clerk. So um, you as a board voted sometime late fall that you were going to mail all of the ballots. I reached out to the school to see what they were going to do for the annual school ballots um, and let them know that there was a lot of confusion with the voters. Last June, when we had this special election, when the town mailed all the ballots and the school did not, the school board met last week and they voted to uh, mail all annual school ballots, but they don't have the authority to actually approve it. Um, each ta Once the school board decides that that's um, the route that they want to go, each school board has to vote to allow them to actually um, mail them. Thank you. I knew you could word that better than I could. So do they pick up the cost of the mailing? Yeah, so um, we usually some stuff we split 50 50 to um, what we will have them do if this gets approved and Elmore also has to give their blessing. Um, I'm working with the same company that I used last time to mail out of all of our ballots, but I've let them know a number of times, thanks to um, Tony's letting us know that they have to be mailed first class they can't be mailed how they were mailed last time, so we would mail the ballots together and then split costs. Okay. Thank you, sir. Right. I would entertain a motion. Yeah, I, I think it's a great idea that they're mailing this. I think the more people that can lay on it is the better, best. So I would make the motion to approve the automatic mailing of annual school ballots to all active voters for this um, coming election. And I'll second that. So I got a motion by Chris, a second by Richard. Is there any further discussion? Laura? I think it's a great idea. Okay, Judy Bickford. Aye. Richard, Chris, you good? Aye. Okay, so all those in favor of the motion as presented, aye. say aye. 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 Richard? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay, great. Thank you. Number seven, we deleted. So, old business. I don't believe we have any old business. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Approve the warrants. I would make a motion to approve the warrants. Thank you, Chris. Do I have a second? I'll second that. So I have a motion by Chris, a second by Richard to approve the warrants. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 
Okay, great. Community comments. Come on up, Jerry. Introduce yourself, please. Uh, Jerry Throne. Uh, I came across something today that's very uh, concerning uh, for everybody that lives uh, in, uh, in Vermont, actually. And that is that uh, it is proposed by the state uh, that education tax rate will go up 18 and a half percent. And I think that is a major concern for everybody that pays taxes in this state. I think that that is the elephant in the room. And I think that's where we should be concentrating uh, our efforts, not on $25,000 that the library needs, but something like this, they, they estimate, and, and, that's, and that's after they take um, 30 or $40,000 out of their reserves. If they didn't take money out of their reserves, it would be more like 20% increase. So I, uh, and then also uh, another fact that I found out today is that uh, this increase uh, would amount to about $700 for each household that has a uh, value of uh, $250,000, which I don't know how many there are in uh, Morristown, but there aren't very many. When I, I just kind of glance through the grant, the grand list, it, it's it's an outlier. So most mostly everybody's going to be paying more than seven hundred dollars. So uh, these are the things that I think are are of utmost importance for us as citizens and taxpayers to uh, try to get a handle on. Talk to our legislators, uh, governor. And, and everybody else uh, that uh, that we can to try to get this under control. Um, I think about 12% of that increase is due to uh, health care benefits. That's something that we probably don't have any any way of controlling. Just like in, in our town, we've done the best we can to try to uh, control our health care benefits for our employees. Uh, but that's an alarming number. 18.5% is where it, it, it stands right yeah. now. Thanks, Jerry. I'll just very quickly say, yeah, I know the Scott administration threw that number out a good six to eight weeks ago, and we've all been kind of toying with that number and trying to figure out what it's all about. I would just say, since you brought it up, Jerry, about <coughs> legislators, there is a breakfast with the legislators coming up. The first, I believe it's, it'll be the first Monday in February. It's going to be down in Stowe. So by all means, go. I've been to one of them already there. You definitely have their ear in a small, small space, and there's not too many of us there, so good place to go. Any other community comments? Yes. I, I, uh, Jerry, you had a real good point, and I happened to go to the school board meeting the other night, and we asked them specifically about that. Uh, they're aware of it, of course. That is not going to happen according to this select board. Uh, there is a formula they got, and they tried to explain it, and I'm sure you've been through the formula too. It is very difficult to understand. Uh, but they assured there is like a fail-safe uh, figure uh, at that, uh, that the schools would use. It's 5%. Now, how they come to that, I, I, I couldn't follow it, and he did explain it, and, uh, and, and he also has agreed to put on their website a formula that the, uh, that the local the residents can, can fill in with the value of their house, and they can come up with the uh, school tax. So according to this, to the superintendent of school, according to the board that was sitting there at that time, they assured me and, and uh, the other people that were sitting there that it's not going to be that large of an increase. And uh, they threw out some figures and they even admitted because they don't have all the figures, they couldn't give you an exact number. But that 20%, the 18% that we all were worried about, they said, no, that cannot happen and, and uh, set their mind. Although we know the school board, School, uh, the school budget was going to increase. So, 
So just to be clear, I know you didn't mean to say this, but you did say according to the select board, but you meant according to the school board. School board, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, Great. Uh, I'm, yeah, it was the, uh, yeah. I don't want to be responsible for the school board's budget. No, I don't, no, no. They, they didn't want to be responsible for it either. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's a very good point because they got that ATM buddy contact. Any other community comments before I move on? Okay, I'm going to move on to schedule. And I did have, or we have an addition here. I do want to remind everybody that on Monday, January 22nd, which is next Monday, there will be, um, I don't know the best name for this, but there's going to be a form. Say that one more time. Crime and Concerns Part 2. Crime and Concerns Part 2. This will be... Uh, this will be at the uh, People's Academy Auditorium at seven o'clock. And our chief of police, Jason Luno, is looking for any questions you might have to be presented to them beforehand, before the forum. And you can submit that to police at morristownvt.gov. And uh, there, is there a link on the website? as well there's a link on the website too so jason's very interested in questions and comments that the public has and um, if you can get those to him beforehand he is much more likely to be able to give you a full response so i would encourage you to do so judy alberry uh, i'm waiting to i did send an email to gma tv to see if they would be willing to record and put it up on the website but i haven't heard back yet so great thank you judy on monday january 29th at 5 30 we'll have a warning for the articles to be presented at town meeting right here in this room on monday january 29th as well at 5 45 hopefully uh, there will be a charter committee meeting in this room on Monday, February 5th at 5.30, we'll have our regular select board meeting. And on Monday, February 26th at 5.30, we'll have the informational meeting going into town meeting. So that's it for the schedule. Other business, uh, I, is there any other business? The, oh, I have one quick statement, but you go ahead. Sarah Haskins, town clerk. Just want to remind people that article petitions are due this Thursday by four o'clock. You need 5% of the voter checklist. Candidate petitions are due Monday, January 29th by five o'clock. I'll be open late that day to receive them. And Sarah Haskins, delinquent tax collector. Everybody that um, was up for tax sale next week has paid in full. Nice. Tax sale has been canceled, and we have less than two thousand dollars worth of um, delinquency, that's, which that's is amazing. which is pretty Thank amazing. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. Um, the ballots. Oh, great question. So the ballots for um, the presidential primary are now in. You have to request them because you have to declare if you want um, Republican or Democratic. So we can't mail them to to everybody you, you declare in public. And then the local ballots will be mailed out by, I think it's February 14th, Valentine's Day. Nice. nice. Thank you, Sarah. That's the last thing I would like to say. I'd just like to remind everybody on Zoom and everyone in the audience to, uh, especially on a night like this, but given the weather we've had for the last couple of weeks, is think about our police department and our fire department and our EM, EMS and certainly our highway department and all that they're doing to keep us safe on uh, the nights that we have, like nights like tonight. And um, I guess that's it. Tony, we've had community comments, but go ahead. It's not a okay. Just trying to help out. Yep. I just want to give Jason a shout out. Everybody should come to that meeting. I come to the last one and you might learn something. The auditorium should be full up there. And if it's not, it'll be a sad day. Agreed. 
I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a second. motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Richard. <clears throat> Any discussion? All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 That would be. Thank you very much. Thank you.